Next, what we need to do is we need to determine how much interest should be paid for the first month. The way we determine interest is we take the principal, the amount outstanding at the end of the last month, and we multiply it by one month worth of interest. So I'm going to type equals, and I'm going to pick up my balance, which is the prior month's ending balance. Now that can be purely relative, because if I copy it down to row 22, I want it to refer to the prior month's row 21 balance, and copy down, copy down. So this can actually remain as a purely relative. Now I'm going to multiply it by the interest rate, so I'm going to click on, I put a multiplication and then a left parenthesis, so I make sure that the order of precedence, these inner parentheses will be computed first and then multiplied by E20. I'm going to click on the interest, which is the interest rate up here in cell, C cell C12, but I want that to be fixed because as I copy it down and down and down, I always want to refer to C12, so the way I do that, while I'm still in this edit mode, is hit the F4 button. And so that's purely fixed, and no matter where I copy this formula to, it will always refer to cell C12. But since that is an annual rate, and I want to know the monthly interest, I have to divide the C12 interest rate of 5% by 12, 12 months. That effectively has given us one month's worth of interest on a $400,000 loan. Since we know the principal portion, and we know the interest portion, we can now go to payment, and the payment will be the sum of, in the left parentheses, and I just click on cell C21, and I hold my mouse button down and drag to D21, and I end up with the right parentheses. So in this very first month, the payment will be $2,777. Next question is, well, what will the new balance be after making this payment. You can take the balance from the last month, which is E20, minus the principal reduction. Therefore, after making a first month payment, you will owe only $398,889. This formula, if set up properly, can now be copied. This whole row of formulas can now be copied all the way down and it will be correct. Why? Because the sum for the payment will always be purely relative, so as I copy it down it becomes C21 to C22 to D22, then C23 to D23. That's correct. The principal will always refer to this fixed principal payment. The interest will always be the prior month's ending balance times this fixed interest rate divided by 12 and the balance will always be the last month balance minus the principal reduction. Since that's been set up correctly using the ideas of relative and absolute referencing, I'm going to highlight cells B21 to E21. Now I've released uh, you know, the shift button. It's simply highlighted. And all you have to do is move your cursor over the bottom left and those crosshairs will appear and just double click and all the formulas calculations have been copied down and you can hit end down and you can see that this uh, effectively has become fully amortized. Let's prove that out by formatting this. I'm going to hold uh, the shift button down. I'm in cell B380. I'm going to go over to uh, E380 and go end up. So that's now selected my whole range and I'm going to change the formatting of this to be maybe currency. And you can see that this now, after 360 months of payments, which were declining payments over the period, is now uh, zero. It doesn't You don't owe anything after this loan. That's the end of this amortization schedule. So now let's clean it up a little bit. We've created the amortization schedule. It seems like it's working. The nice thing about this is, let's say uh, the down payment percentage doesn't need to be uh, 20%, maybe it's only 10%. I can just change this to be 0.1, and it flows all the way through everything. Let's go all the way down to the bottom and see if it uh, proves out to be true. End down, and you can see that also fully amortizes. End up puts me back again, and you can see I can change any one of these figures. In fact, I'll highlight the ones that I would expect the user to input. I'll change them maybe to a, maybe a light yellow or light green. 
I want them to input that. In fact, I'm going to control click these. I'm going to control click um, interest rate and loan period because these are other pieces of data that we want the user to input. And I'll just choose that top one. Home amount and down payment percentage. Let's click that as well. So that kind of helps the user know that these are data items that they're going to be inputting. All the others that are just plain old black uh, with the white background are not items that we would expect the user to put into the, into the system. They would just be locked down formulas.